Hello, my name is Catherine Kassam. My name is Philip Rosner. And we're the editors of a new volume published by Bristol University Press called Evolutions of Capitalism, Historical Perspectives, 1200 to 2000. Spanning the medieval market economy to the multinationals of today, our new edited volume traces the series of evolutions that led to the development of capitalism. The volume proposes that the development of capitalism was connected to the emergence of five economic functions, entrepreneurship, finance, management, workers, and political leaders. These functions are associated with the ability for firms to enter and exit the market, to pool finance for multiple individuals, and to operate in a political and legal framework with input from the population. The chapters by Mark Kassen and myself at the start of the volume cover show that the emergence of, the, of entrepreneurship, finance and market regulation in England, Italy and Germany during the 13th to the 16th centuries underpin subsequent economic opportunities, including industrialization and modern economic growth. The following three chapters explore situations where countries developed different trajectories, however. Svel Christensen's chapter, for instance, examines how in the 20th century Sweden and Norway developed distinct ownership structures that differ both from the dominant continental models as well as the UK and the United States, but also from each other. Edmund Smith shows in this chapter that during the 16th and 17th centuries or the early modern period, merchants in Asia and Africa adopted cross-cultural and communal rather than national or institutional frameworks underpinning their global exchange with English and Portuguese merchants. Colin Lewis, on the other hand, going into the 19th and 20th century, demonstrates that there was a diversity of approaches that emerged in South America, Asia and Africa, during the 19th and 20th centuries. He notes as part of his analysis there were, that there were differences in the attitudes of political leaders with countries whose leaders had long-term plans focused on investing in the local population, including their education and training, tending to outperform those whose politicians favored short-term measures, such as, such as generating income by awarding contracts to entrepreneurs from overseas or using contracts as a form of domestic political patronage. Evolutions of capitalism, historical perspectives, 1200 to 2000, thus adopts a very distinctive approach. Rather than focusing on a single start date or location, we see capitalism as, the, as an emergent system, as a gradual process, which varies between different locations and different times. Contributors are drawn from the fields of economics, history and management. The case studies that they provide enable comparisons to be drawn across locations and over time. The geographical focuses on Western capitalism, including non-Western countries subject to Western political and cultural influences. The final group of chapters consider the impact of capitalism. Religious and social beliefs have the potential to constrain some of the negative elements of capitalism, yet, as David Jeremy shows, challenges have persisted in reconciling the two. The impact of capitalism on the natural environment has been substantial. Jeffrey Jones considers how and why entrepreneurs and business leaders began to see for-profit business as an opportunity for environmental sustainability rather than depletion. To what extent has capitalism increased or decreased inequality? My chapter suggests that capitalism has led to an uneven distribution of income and wealth, the effects of which are most noticeable at the regional rather than national level. All chapters are written to be accessible both for students and researchers wishing to make cross-period or transdisciplinary comparisons. What are the key takeaways from this book? Um, we suggest that there are fundamentally two. One is, and they're presented in the conclusion, one is that that relates to geographical dimensions. Our chapters show that locations in which capitalist functions emerged earliest did not necessarily continue to replicate um, that speed of progress. Our second conclusion is related to values and beliefs. Systems of power should not be able to perpetuate themselves. They should always be challenged. This can make a difference between a system that perpetuates inequalities or one that sees income and wealth generated by capitalism employed for the benefit of society. 
Overall, our volume provides a novel perspective on the topic, offering a wide chronological scope, a transdisciplinary perspective, academically rigorous case studies that can be read independently, and a framework that unites the chapters and allows conclusions to be drawn from them. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much.